I asked him a couple questions earlier today about thriving in high leverage situations. Uh, I do enjoy it. I've always kind of been, uh, I don't want to say a thrill seeker because I'm not an idiot. You know, I, I enjoy life and I don't want it to end anytime soon, but uh, I've always enjoyed, you know, things that maybe other people don't. And, <clears throat> you know, I, it, was, it was an acquired skill. I credit uh, old man mentor Darren Oliver for uh, helping me along the way there. You know, he, I would watch him pitch. I played with him in Anaheim and in, in Texas. And I would watch him pitch in big situations like that, and, and he looked like he was falling asleep out there or throwing, you know, throwing a bullpen in spring training. And, and I, I asked him how he, you know, how he did it. And he just basically said that he ignored the hitter in the situation whenever he pitched and, and just really um, just tried to do what he knew how to do and then throw the ball in, in places where he wanted to and not get worked up over anything. And if you do that, if you keep yourself under control in those situations and know that the hitter is going to be overexcited or anxious because he wants to get a big hit, then you're already winning the battle there and you already have the upper hand. Well, I'll tell you, Darren Oliver, a great reference because he was a one-time starter. Now, I talked to Dom Chidi recently, and he said that you have a starter-type mentality, how you approach each hitter. You have a game plan going in, really what your goal is to try to get that hitter out. Yeah, that's, you know, that's high praise from Dom. Um, I think what he's, what he's, you know, he's saying that I can dissect a hitter, you know, based on what he's showing me. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'm doing that if, uh, if a hitter's showing you something. But some guys, you can't do that. You know, you face a guy like Miguel Cabrera, and uh, I had an bat against him two years ago that I went up there, and he took the same pitch three times in a row and just walked back to the bench. And then the next, the next at bat, you know, if I threw that pitch, it's, it's going to be off the wall. So... He's, Dom's giving me a lot of credit, uh, you know, saying I can read hitters, but some, some guys you can't, but you, you do it as much as possible. Well, it seems pretty obvious that you do have that great ability. You adjust your pitches throughout the count. Now, let's go back to Dom Chidi. How has he been, and, and do you have a good relationship with him out in that Orioles bullpen? Yeah, Dom, Dom's been awesome. He's, uh, you know, I should say, you know, assistant pitching coach or co-pitching coach slash bullpen coach. He's, he's been around the game a long time, and he's done just about every, everything you can do in baseball. Um, and he, he, you learn something from him every day, I'm sure. And, and he brings good humor to the bullpen and, and kind of you know, lets us bend the rules but not break them. Uh, he, he's been great, and we really enjoy him. And it's really just a privilege to come to work every day and look at his mustache. So um, you can't say enough good things about his mustache. Well, Dom Chidi is a great asset out that, there in that Orioles bullpen, but you are now a veteran presence out there. And there has been some uh, turnover here recently. Is there any kind of ritual you guys do? And since you are one of the older uh, pitchers in the bullpen, do you take charge as far as that goes? Uh, I believe what you're referring to is hazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, by the incognito rule, we don't do that here in Baltimore. <laughs> uh, it used to be in spring training, it was a, a somersault, you know, in front of everybody. You just had to get, you know, do a somersault. And, uh, we, we might find a guy for being late to the, you know, the season and um, find him a small amount just for being late to the bullpen. And, but no, there's no real hazing. It's, uh, this, this bullpen this year has been a, it's kind of been a little different feel. It's, uh, it's a lot of mass texting. It's a lot of bullpen dinners. It's, it's a, we hang out quite a bit, and we're having a good time and, and really just enjoying ourselves down there. Well, you guys do a great job of actually, like, passing the baton, as Buck Showalter speaks about um, with his offense. Um, great offenses really take one at bat at a time, and it seems like the bullpen is really doing that this year, off to a very solid start. Yeah, it's, uh, I think early in the year, Buck tries to get everybody into to high leverage situations, and it, it pays off towards the end of the year. Uh, you know, he he's not going to say, well, here's an eighth inning guy, or here's a seventh inning guy. It's Let's let's throw everybody into these, these situations, see how they handle themselves, give them some confidence for you know July, August, September, know that they've been in these situations before, and and it's it really benefits everybody in the long run because everybody can do the job, and it, you know like you said we do pass the baton. Uh, it seems like whenever I come out of the game, Mattis is in the game. Whenever he comes out, I'm in. And, uh, and all the way down to Tommy, and it, it, everybody's just been uh, picking each other up, and it, it makes for, it makes it easier to sit next to the guy the next day, you know. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing a great job. Now, how about this? 
Uh, is there any jealousy or envy in the fact that your wife gets more TV time than you do? <laughs> yeah, no, no jealousy at all. I, you know, I like it. You know, we're on the road quite a bit, and you know, on any given day, I can flip on the Fox News and watch her for an hour or so and enjoy it. I'm, I'm just trying to put a few more years in, Bordy, and then I'm gonna mail it in and just live off her. <laughs> all right, so. I'm, a, I'm the biggest supporter, her biggest cheerleader, and uh, I'm super proud of, of what she does on a daily basis.